Borium is a powerful new AI research platform that features a host of free and really handy tools. One of the big ones is their Science Navigator, which provides a very deep search of literature and summarization. Searches over 160 million papers and uses both DeepSeek and ChatGPT 4.0 in order to give you the best possible results. Today, I'm going to test a range of searches in the Science Navigator. And then I'm going to give you a tour of some of the other features on the rest of the Borium site. Got a link in the video description that will take you to the page where you can test these tools for yourself. So the Science Navigator sits on the home page and we've got the usual prompt box. We can see that we have the option to use DeepThink from DeepSeek Reasoning Model or 4.0. 4.0 does use 30 of the tokens and so you can purchase those, but you do get a daily allowance. So even if you want to use for free, you do get a number of instances of 4.0 before you will need to flick back to DeepThink. And I've actually found for some things, particularly maths related, DeepThink can be as good or even better. And we can just leave it on auto if we're not too fussed of which one we want. We can niche down on different disciplines. So we can leave it open to all disciplines. It's going to search up to 160 million papers. Or if we want to try and narrow our search down a little bit, we can pick one of the domains and that will filter down to that particular domain. If you're working in a particular research area where a term can mean different things across different domains, this can be really helpful because it's going to avoid those false positives of hits from the other domains you're not interested in. If we want to ask about molecular related things, we can also upload a molecular image here using this button. So let's do a couple of searches that we've tested on some of the previous AI search tools and see how the Science Navigator does. So the search was relatively quick and it did show some of its working as it went. It provides the reporting on the left hand side and we can see that we have hyperlinks to all of the articles that it's referencing. And then we have the reference list here on the right hand side. This is really handy to be able to see everything neatly together. Some of the other products that I've used, I've found that the references are hidden away at the bottom. They can be a bit of a pain to get to. If I'm doing a literature review, I normally want to see both side by side because both are going to be important. We've got a filter. We can filter for number of citations, for journal, impact factor, and date range. And we can go from relevance first to quality first, and that will see it sort based on the number of citations and the impact factor of the journal. So we can get a different order. It'll still be the same list of references though. At the bottom, we've got the option to chat with any of these papers and also to batch add to our knowledge base. So our knowledge base is where we can just save our literature that we are interested in retaining. When we hit chat with papers, then we can select one or more papers to chat with. Here I chose to challenge it a little bit. This very first paper where it's talking about early childhood education, wasn't quite sure why that got selected as I was interested in vocational medical education. And so I asked why it was selected and it said that there was a crossover in the themes. And so I prompted it on that and it gave me quite a substantial description there of why it included that paper. And if we look at some of the things like data-driven decision-making, personalized learning paths, those actually probably apply more to someone in med school than they do in early childhood education. So quite interesting to see things that on the surface I might not have selected and looked at for part of what I'm doing here. But in fact, it was actually more relevant than it appeared at first glance. We can also select multiple papers and ask the assistant to look at themes and things like that as well. If we click the collapse button, it takes the references away, but it gives us a selection of tables, figures and images from the papers. And then it's also got some relevant scholars here who we might choose to go and check out as well. Clicking on any of the references, we'll scroll to that reference in the reference list. Clicking on the references in the reference list will bring up a new tab where it will take us to an AI summary of the paper, key information about the paper, as well as a link and the DOI if we want to go to the original source itself. We can see that over on the right hand side we've got the assistant back there as well. 
and so we can ask it to summarize, describe the research methods, extract findings, or academic concepts from this particular paper. When you're in the literature review and exploration stage, this is going to be really valuable where you might have a really large number of papers and you can get through them much more quickly by getting these summaries, seeing the AI summary, and then using that as a basis for going and finding the original and reading the whole paper. And so clicking on the link takes us to the original article. Repeating my same query, but with DeepSeek instead of ChatGPT, we see that there is some changes in the references that got found. And it actually looks like some of them are more relevant than what ChatGPT was trying to throw at us. And we can see that a similar report, some subtle changes in there. When we come down to the bottom, we can give feedback on whether we like this or not. We can copy it out. We can regenerate, and sometimes regenerating will give us a slightly different response second time through. Also it gives us related searches as well. When we're in that discovery phase, can be really handy to just be doing a few searches, throwing some ideas in there, seeing where this related search takes us. So we hit on plus for this one, and we can see it's just generating a new search for us. The secondary search is added just down below the first search that we did. So it all builds on the same page, and then if we like, we can share it, or if we want to return to anything, then the little clock button is our history, and we can go back into our history. So another search that I like to do, just because I've done it a few times, and also because there's quite a clear literature on it, is about creatine and building muscle. And we can see that when I put in this research question, it starts to break down the different topics that it's going to be searching under. And we can see that all of those are very relevant to what I was asking. It's done a search, and if we have a look at the papers, definitely very clearly about what we're interested in. This time around, it's even given us a nice diagram explaining how creatine fits into your physical system. So what's happening there in that system and the second one with the cells. So that's quite neat. I haven't seen that very often from other research tools, the addition of the diagrams to help explain things. And again, we then get a number of different related searches that we can follow up with to search further. So you'll notice on the homepage, in addition to our Science Navigator, we also have recommended papers. As it gets to know you and your research areas, you'll find that these become better and better at matching to what you're interested in. Coming down through the rest of our sections, in addition to doing those searches, you can also subscribe. So on our subscription page, we're able to set it up to follow particular journals, particular scholars, and particular keywords. And so we can do that either by hitting one of these pluses or by hitting new subscription. And then we can see we've got journals, scholars, and keywords, and we can just search up whatever or whoever we want to follow. So I search up the name of a journal, and then I hit subscribe, and it's going to then track that journal for me. I can do the same for scholars. And just like sites like Google Scholar, you as a researcher or academic can actually have your own page in here. So if we try and search up me, uh, we can find me in here. We can actually find two different versions of me. There's the claimed one. So I still need to actually go ahead and merge these and also change uh, and update where I am currently working. But this is quite handy. It's always nice to have good profile pages set up for people to be able to find you and see your work. Under the library section, we have a whole lot of different research fields where we can just go and browse. Clicking on a particular domain will take you into the sub areas. And then we end up with a whole lot of journals. You'll notice there's some Chinese text in here. Borium has been built in China and they built it in Chinese first and then they've been translating it over. And for the most part, you'll find that it is the English site is predominantly in English. Every so often though, there's a thing that'll come up where they haven't quite got the translation for everything. We can see here, that doesn't actually make any difference to us. All of the journal, all of the links, everything else is in English. If you are a Chinese speaking researcher, then you might actually find it really valuable. Down in the settings, we can flick it over from English. You can work in Chinese instead. So library is pretty handy for just being able to search through, have a look at journals, have a look at recent articles. In the scholar section, you'll find a whole lot of researchers. 
And you can also claim and set up your own Scholar profile as well. We can see that it is sorting them, it's giving us ones who are high impact or we might otherwise be interested in the work that they're doing. And we can also search people up. Knowledge Base is just a folder for saving the articles that you're finding as you're doing your searches. The next section down, we've got notebooks, courses, apps, and competitions. And so as we kind of come down this page, we're moving more and more into more specific high performance computing type areas. Notebooks is quite interesting. You can create your own notebook, which can be coding, or it can just be your notes on whatever you're studying. And here we can see there's a mix of English and a few Chinese titled, although even these will notice it's in the title, but it's actually the notebook itself is in English. And again, if you are a Chinese speaking researcher, then I think you're going to get a lot of value out of the site where it does have that alternate option, whereas a lot of the others are English only. Courses currently are either Chinese or bilingual with English. And uh, you can see here the ones that have popped up, they are all English. Some are free, some are paid, and they are working towards uh, English only ones coming in the future. Possibly I will be putting a one of my own teaching R up here to see how their platform performs. In the apps section, there's a whole lot of highly specific apps. They are very much built around things like science and particularly high performance computing related things. So some of it's coding, some of it's things like genomics. If that is an area of yours, you might find something handy in there. And then the remainder of the sections, uh, the competitions, uni lab, jobs, files are all built around high performance computing. If you're wanting to run things across high GPU intensive computing, then this could be an option for you to check out. So this has been some test searches of Borium using the Science Navigator and then looking at some of the other sections. The majority of what is on the site is free to use so it's well worth checking out as an alternative to some of the other research apps that are out there. Once again the link for Borium is in the video description. Using that link helps them track that you have come to them from my video. And as they add more features to the site, I'm sure that I'll be producing another video at some stage in the future to demonstrate those. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back really soon with more videos on AI, research, data, and random stuff.